Greeting is is a great honor for me, Funkas, to be with uh, you on the 24-hour channel news program. This new update brings you the hottest and most accurate information about the securities and social other even that have occurred today. Now let's dive into the main news. Dearest teamed audience, in recent days, heavy rain continues to occur in many parts of China. Heavy or extremely heavy rain has been experienced in some areas of central and northern Guangxi, Hubei, northern Jiangxi, southeastern Hubei, and southern Anhui. The prolonged heavy rainfall over several days has led to many hydrological stations in the Yangtze River Basin and the Yangtze River's tributaries exceeding flood warning levels. Hubei, Guangxi, Hunan, and other regions have been severely affected by serious flooding. Yesterday, the first flood of the year on the Yangtze River occurred. Within a week, 160 rivers experienced flooding beyond warning levels. After images of Bok Tu Chow Island being inundated in the Paracel Islands circulated, some netizens joked that due to the continuous heavy rain, the world's largest aircraft carrier, Bok Tu Chow Island, had been launched in the South China Sea. In many parts of China, rainfall has exceeded seasonal warning levels, posing a risk of flooding. Flood note. One on the Yangtze River has formed, affecting over 4 million people in Hubei province. In response to the general situation, China's Defense Department has issued a three-level emergency response to control flooding. According to comprehensive meteorological and hydrological forecasts, in the coming days, the main flow of the middle and lower reaches of the Yangtze River and Dongding Lake will continue to experience heavy rainfall, which could have a greater impact on the lower reaches. In light of the current flood situation, the Ministry of National Defense has dispatched Tate teams to support frontline flood prevention efforts in the southern areas, while also utilizing key hydraulic structures such as the Tam Heap structure on the Yangtze River to reduce discharge and alleviate pressure downstream. As reported by meteorologist Lian Hadaobao, widespread heavy rainfall has been pouring down on the Tam Wang region since the beginning of the flood season. According to statistics from Hubei Province's Climate Center, the province's average rainfall has broken historical records, reaching the highest level in the period since meteorological records began in 1951. This is the highest value in history. Experts' analysis indicates that this round of heavy rain is not only extensive but also of great intensity and extremity. It is mainly influenced by the continuous impact of the northward cold vortex and the proximity of tropical high pressure. The position of the Western Pacific subtropical high is relatively stable, and the moisture transport channel is relatively stable as well. Hubei is located on the periphery of the subtropical high, within a strong moisture transport belt, ensuring a continuous supply of moisture. The southward spread of cold air, along with the interaction of cold and warm air masses in the southern region, has resulted in continuous thunderstorms and heavy rainfall in Hubei. Water levels in Trongso and the provincial capital of Hubei have exceeded warning levels. Even Bok Tu Chow Island, a famous scenic spot in the region, has been affected. Due to the surrounding area being inundated with high water levels, it appears as if an aircraft carrier is floating in the sky, an unusual sight. After images of Bok Tu Chow Island being flooded spread, some netizens joke that due to the continuous downpour, the world's largest aircraft carrier, Bok Tu Chow Island, had recently been launched in the South China Sea. In the upcoming week, the main focus of rainfall will be concentrated in the regions of Honghoai, Zhanghoai, West and South Zhongnam, Southern and Eastern areas of the Yangtze River. This will result in rising water levels and water exceeding warning levels by 0. 5 km to 1.5 meters in the Liangwa Road tributaries to Daidong River and to reservoirs. Major rivers such as the Yangtze River, Yuan River, and West River in Hubei and Guangxi will again experience flooding beyond warning levels, and some small and medium-sized rivers may also experience relatively significant flooding. Heavy rain has returned to some regions of China, resulting in some river water levels exceeding warning levels and causing serious flooding in certain areas. Official statistics indicate that recent heavy rain and flooding in southern China have affected 17.19 million people disrupting local transportation on numerous highways and provincial roads, according to reports from Chinese media. Since the beginning of the month, natural disasters and flooding in the south have affected 17. 19 million people in nine provinces and cities, 
including Zhejiang, Anhui, Fujian, Jiangxi, Hubei, Hunan, Guangxi, Sichuan, and Gizhou, resulting in 50 deaths and 15 missing persons, with nearly 600,000 people urgently evacuated. Additionally, 946,500 hectares of agricultural land have been affected by flooding, with a direct economic loss of up to 8.93 billion Chinese yuan. According to the forecast from the China Central Meteorological Observatory, the rain will continue during this period, and areas along the middle and lower reaches of the Yangtze River will experience heavy rainfall again from Monday to Saturday. The Flood Control and Drought Relief Headquarters of China shoot an early warning at three levels on Tuesday. The torrential rain in Beijing has also resulted in at least 77 fatalities, making today the first seven victims of the flooding in Beijing. Secretary of the Beijing Municipal Party Committee, Kai Chi, led officials in conducting inspections and paying respects in Fangshan District, the area most severely affected. Meanwhile, Chinese netizens continue to raise questions about the serious flooding in the capital city of Beijing, which has caused numerous casualties. Many netizens criticize the construction practices, similar to other areas in China, focusing on projects for appearances. While modern and luxurious buildings are erected on the surface, the infrastructure is weak and susceptible to flooding during disasters. Some also criticize the fact that it has been several days since the disaster occurred, and even the official death toll cannot be disclosed, leading to a lack of credibility. Kai Chi admitted that the flooding has revealed many issues that require deep reflection. He emphasized the need to remember the lessons learned and to continuously improve the work. According to reports from Chinese media, Kai Chi also expressed on site that the heavy rainfall had caused significant loss of life and property for the people, resulting in over 70 fatalities. Kai Chi pointed out that the lessons from this flood are extremely profound, exposing various issues related to planning, infrastructure, emergency management, and more. These aspects will continue to be strengthened and improved in the future. Netizens have questioned the official death toll after the heavy rainfall on Saturday and the subsequent flooding in Beijing, causing dozens of fatalities. China's Xinhua News Agency for the first time reported that the death toll from the flooding in Beijing is 37. Given the severity of the flooding in Fangshan and other suburban areas in southern Beijing, coupled with the public's tendency to doubt officials' credibility, concerns are rising that the actual death toll could be higher. In Fangshan district of Beijing, the impact has been severe. The Wall Street Journal reported today that many bridges in the mountainous area near Chukudown have been washed away by floodwaters, and many stretches of road have been submerged with scattered vehicles. In the village of Thuan Ma Trang, a man named Lee mentioned that the death toll must be higher than 37. Lee said he was called to the village of Thuan Ma to identify the body of his brother. The rest of the body was found when police pulled a sedan out of the water on Monday afternoon. His seatmate also questioned that while the government says there are 37 deaths, the reality is 370 deaths. A man named Wang Jun Li is seeking help in finding his 25-year-old nephew. He found his nephew's truck abandoned on a hill. He is from Laitu County, Hebei Province, and said that more than a dozen family members rushed to search for his nephew everywhere. He asked the excavation team to help locate his nephew. Ladies and gentlemen, Water levels in over 60 major rivers in some provinces in southern China have exceeded critical warning levels. The Ministry of Civil Affairs confirmed on Monday that 30 people have died and 15 are missing. Since the beginning of the month, heavy rain has caused flooding, landslides, and hail in southwestern and southern China, affecting Anhui, Jiangxi, Hubei, Hunan, Guangdong, Guangxi, Gizhou, Sichuan, and other provinces, with 9.564 million people affected. Hubei province is the hardest hit area by the flooding, with the Shang River in Trongsa, the capital city of Hubei province, surpassing the flood warning level. The flood waters overflowed onto the streets, damaging vehicles and uprooting many large trees. Since mid-month, Hubei province has been consistently hit by heavy downpours. At its worst point, the accumulated rainfall in Kaodai and Tuangan of Hubei reach for 20 minus 486 mm. Rivers and streams in Hubei have surged, with some dams breaking, forcing many residents to evacuate urgently. In addition to Hubei, 48 cities and 238 counties across eight provinces have been affected by the flooding, 
resulting in a direct economic loss of up to 18.89 billion Chinese yuan. The flooding situation continues in southern China, while northern China has entered a crucial phase of flood control and drought relief. Due to continuous lack of rainfall in the north since the beginning of spring, many areas are suffering from scorching heat, with some areas experiencing severe drought. It is reported that the Beijing Tianjin Hebei region and other northern provinces experienced a heat wave last week, with temperatures reaching 40 degrees Celsius in some places on Monday. Cities in Shanxi have issued heat wave warnings, with temperatures expected to exceed 35 degrees Celsius for the next three days. In Beijing, many residents stayed indoors over the weekend to avoid the heat. In Inner Mongolia, Hundreds of armed Chinese police officers are battling fires that originated in Mongolia, spreading rapidly due to dry air and strong winds. The fire outbreak in Mongolia approached China over the past weekend, spreading to Hulan Bayer, China, directly threatening China's forest and grassland resources. As of Monday evening local time, the fire in Mongolia continues to spread, and hundreds of officers from China's armed police first forestry division are making efforts to extinguish the flames. Another landslide occurred in BAC Ha Village, Thanquan Town, Namtrong District, Tuangduong City, Hubei Province, China, on Friday evening, causing a portion of the Mirage Hotel in the area to collapse. The death toll has now risen to 12. The collapse of the mountain caused a section of the Mirage Hotel located in Kintu Kao, the third group of BAC Ha Village, Thanquan Town, to collapse in the western part of Namtrong District. The hotel is a three-story building with a construction area of about 1,300 square meters. The first floor is used for dining, while the second and third floors are for accommodation. Currently, 12 people have been confirmed dead, three others have been rescued, and 15 people are still trapped. Among them, the oldest is 61 years old and the youngest is 17 years old. Rescue efforts are still underway. According to on-site inspections by relevant experts, they believe this was an unexpected landslide incident. The collapse part is about 30 meters long, 3 meters high, and about 3,000 cubic meters. The construction site contains hundreds of cubic meters of dangerous soil and rocks, which could lead to secondary disasters. Landslides are natural phenomena, but human engineering activities can also trigger landslides. If construction work involves cutting hillsides, after cutting the slope, it becomes prone to landslides. As a result, there are many landslide-prone areas on both sides of the road. The cause of the mountain collapse has many factors, such as the relatively fragmented rock layers on the mountain, which have developed cracks. When certain disturbances occur, these cracks penetrate, causing the rock mass to become unstable. In the event of rain or vibrations, it will collapse. That concludes today's news update. Feel free to leave any contributions in the comments section. If you found this informative, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for your attention. We have just provided you with the last date update. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to receive the last date information about our video. Thank you for your attention and support. Goodbye and see you in the upcoming videos of our program.